show for you today. I want to thank the libraries for inviting me. I wish we could do it in person and next summer I will definitely come and see you in person. But this summer I'm going to do some experiments that you can watch here on the video and if you're at home feel free to shout out the answers and I'll try and hear you. But we're going to talk about heads and tails today. So I've got a lot of tails for you and a lot of heads for you. So the first experiment, this is dry ice frozen carbon dioxide gas. Can you see the gas? Everybody say carbon dioxide. Yeah, this is carbon dioxide. Now, these are just regular quarters. Push the quarter into the ice. One, two, three. Can you see it shaking? So what's happening is as the gas is produced, it pushes those quarters out of the way. So it's a little gas pressure experiment. Do you guys know who the president is on the quarters? Yeah, George Washington. And can you guess what he died of? Yeah, he died of the cold. He was shivering, you get it? And he died of the cold. My quarters, my dancing George Washingtons. Yeah, he died of pneumonia, so he caught cold. And the heads and the tails are going to stop shaking now. You know what this is, right? Cold, hard cash. <laughs> now, the next experiment I have for you is my lie detector. This will tell me if you are telling the truth or if you are telling a lie. So here's my lie detector. First, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I am Mr. Bond. I am a science teacher and I am from England. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. And what happens when I tell the truth? It goes up. So now let me try a lie. I am the Queen of England, and I rule everything that I see. Is that true? No. I'm from Australia. No, that's not true either. And I love crocodiles. Is that true? No, you know it's not true because it doesn't go up. If I tell the truth, I am Mr. Bond, and I love science, it goes up. But if I tell a lie, I am an eight-year-old girl. It doesn't go up. Now, I just told you that this was a lie detector, right? But it's not true. I was kidding you. That's called a tall tale. It's not really a lie, but it's not telling the truth. This is not a lie detector. In fact, it doesn't matter what I say. The liquid in here is methyl chloride, and it boils at the temperature of your blood. So if you are warm-blooded, it will go up. Now, in my other hand, I was holding a little thing of ice, just regular ice, and that made my hand really cold. So now, when I hold it in this hand, it goes down. So it doesn't matter if I'm lying or telling the truth. This, this liquid boils at about 95 degrees. 98.6 degrees is the temperature of your blood. Now, I did this last week at the zoo with a crocodile. 
And when I did it with a crocodile, it didn't go up. Do you know why it didn't go up? Yeah, because it's a cold-blooded animal. And because it was lying, it was lying on the ground, you know, like elephant, like crocodiles lie on the ground. Yeah, never mind, okay. <laughs> now, my next experiment, another thing that has tails is a comet. So I'm going to make a comet for you. Does anybody know what a comet is made of? A comet is made of various kinds of salts, not just table salts, but also, also different kinds of salts. Metal, here's some money, metals are in a comet. There is sand and other silicates. There are rocks of different materials. And there's water, of course, there's water on the comet. And one more thing, frozen carbon dioxide, just like the dry ice. So let me see if I can make a comet for you right here in the studio. There's the dry ice. And what else is in a comet? Yep, let's put in some rocks. And my assistant will zoom in here so you get a close-up view. Here are the rocks. We've got the frozen carbon dioxide. We've got the rocks. Uh, let's put in the silicates. That's basically sand. Put some sand on here. La -da 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 -da. There's your sand. I love messy experiments. Uh, we got some metals. These are pennies, but it could be any kind of metal. We think comets are really rich in metals. And remember I said there's salts, so I'll pour in some salt. And the last thing is water, so I'm going to pour in some water. The closest comet is Halley's Comet. It goes around the sun, just like we do, and it takes about 75 years. So it only comes close enough for us to see it once every 75 years. There's some water. Lovely. And now, to make the comet, all of these materials are pulled together by their own gravity over billions of years. So this is going to take about a billion years. Under high pressure and incredibly low temperatures. And now we wait for about 3 billion years for it to form into a fully formed comet. When I was young, I saw a comet called hale Bop, and it only comes around once every 2,000 years. So I was really lucky that I got to see it. And I'm sorry, guys, unless you live to be really old, you're not going to see it. Do you want to see my comet? Let me see if it is stuck in here. Oh, yeah, that's a beauty. So here's my comet. You see the rocks, you see the coins, the metals, the salts, all different kinds of parts of the comet. And can you see the tail? You see the tail coming off the comet? Now, I'm blowing on the comet. So that's why it looks like the tail is going away from it. But what really makes the carbon dioxide melt in a real comet is the heat from the sun. So the tail of the comet is actually facing towards the sun. It doesn't matter which direction it's going in. But whatever way the tail is pointing, you know that that is the way towards the sun. Because the comet's tail points towards the sun. So a comet has a tail made of carbon dioxide that is melting off of the comet. And a, the most common comet, the one that we see most frequently, is Halley's Comet. It goes around once every 75 years. 
So you get to see it in about 25 years. I think it's next time it's due. So we're going to back up again. Another tale I want to talk about is Dragon Tales. Do you guys like Dragon Tales? It's one of my favorite shows, Dragon Tales. And I've always wondered how the dragons can shoot fire out of their mouths. Now, since I'm a scientist, I know that fire needs three things. It needs an ignition, an igniter, something to get it started, activation energy. And it needs fuel. The fire needs fuel. In this case, I've got lycopodium powder for my fuel. And the third thing it needs is air, because fire needs oxygen. So I've got, I think that a dragon shoots fire with a little igniter that it has in its mouth, and then a supply of this lycopodium powder that it blows out. And then when it mixes with the air, we get the fire. So I thought I would try and reproduce the dragon's fire myself. So here's the igniter. Stand back, everybody. Get back away from the screen. Wow, it worked, just like a dragon's fire. Let's try it again, ready? Wow, so cool. So fire needs an ignition, it needs fuel, and it needs oxygen from the air around us. And if you stop the oxygen from getting to a fire, that's a good way to put it out. So that's why we put blankets on a fire or a fire extinguisher, ready? Wow, that is so much fun. By the way, don't try any of these experiments at home. I am a trained professional. Don't try any of my experiments at home. Here's something that puts out fires. My assistant is going to give you a close-up view here of the dry ice in my cauldron. So I'm going to drop my dry ice down into the cauldron. Bubble, bubble. Going to add some more water here. La, da, 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 da. That gas is carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide puts out fires. Now, this is my most dangerous experiment. Ready? I'm going to put my hand down into the cauldron. Count to 10 and watch what happens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And after 10 seconds, you can see nothing happens at all. I was just kidding. It doesn't do anything. Everybody, take a deep breath and hold it. And breathe out. When you breathe out, that gas that you breathe out is this. It's carbon dioxide. So it's totally safe. I could put my whole head in here and it doesn't do anything at all. <laughs> I've had too much to drink. So this gas, carbon dioxide, is what we use to put out fires. And it's also what we use to make sodas taste, taste fizzy. Clean my glasses. All right, so the next experiment, I'm going to make a volcano erupt for you. Oh, and I'm going to use this orange crystal. This is called ammonium dichromate. It's a beautiful, bright orange crystal. Ammonium dichromate. Very dense beautiful orange crystal. And for this experiment, I'm going to burn the ammonium dichromate. Let's do one scoop here. We're going to close up on it. What, two scoops? Are you mad? What, three scoops? Are you crazy? All right, let's try three scoops.
Now again, to make the volcano erupt, I'm going to need some activation energy. So I'm going to use a spark to get it started. But once it burns, it will burn by itself. Oh, and I need to wear a mask for this experiment. Thank you. My assistant is giving me a mask to wear. The largest volcano that ever erupted is called Krakatoa. It was in the, an island off the coast of Indonesia. And when Krakatoa erupted, it affected the sunsets all over the world. It was such a huge eruption. And the entire island of Krakatoa was completely destroyed. You know, last night I was in my living room and I accidentally kicked the coffee table. And you know what happened? I cracked a toa. <laughs> so it's easy to remember the biggest volcano ever was Krakatoa. So let's do the eruption. I'm going to get the experiment going. There's your ammonium dichromate. Here's the activation energy. Perfect. Can you see the ash coming off? When the ash came off of Mount Vesuvius, there was so much ash, it buried the entire uh, village of Pompeii. And it was 2,000 years before we uncovered it again. There's also lots of gas coming off. Can you see those gases coming up? Now that gas is totally safe, it's nitrogen. But a lot of volcanoes, the gas that it gives off is very dangerous. In fact, most people who die in a volcanic eruption die from the gases. Now I wanna show you the law of conservation of mass because we started with this beautiful orange crystal, and we ended with 10 times as much of this dark green ash. We have 10 times the volume of the ash as we did of the crystal, but they weigh exactly the same. I weighed them before and after, and they both weigh exactly the same because we cannot create mass and we cannot destroy mass, but we can change it from one form into another. So we changed it from a little bit of dense, bright orange crystal into a whole lot more of soft, fluffy ash. But it's the same amount of weight, the same amount of mass. Now, the next experiment I want to do for you is too big to do it here in the studio. So I'm going to step outside. I'm going to get a big vat of liquid nitrogen. And I'll put that on the floor. And then I'm going to climb up on a ladder as high as I can, get a bucket of hot water, and tip it down into the liquid nitrogen. And let's see what happens. It's too big to do it here in the studio. So I'm going to go outside and just do it. Let's go. Here we go. Hot water, liquid nitrogen. Ten, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fantastic. Oh, wow. What did you think of that, guys? That was fantastic. That was so much fun. Now, if you were worried about Mr. Bond, don't worry. I was covered in that white gas, but it was nitrogen. And nitrogen is eight out of 10 parts of the air around us. Everybody put up 10 fingers and put your thumbs away. Eight out of 10 parts of the air is nitrogen. And most of the other two parts, hold up your thumbs, 
most of the other two parts is oxygen. So in the air around us, we have eight parts nitrogen and two parts oxygen. Nitrogen, oxygen. Nitrogen, oxygen. Oxygen, I tricked you. <laughs> thumbs up. No, I'm, thumbs up. Don't say oxygen. Thumbs up. Don't say oxygen. <laughs> All right, we've got one more big explosion. It's so big, I had to do it in a school, in a school gym. And I exploded 1,000 ping pong balls. I did it with the liquid nitrogen again. And you're going to see how the liquid nitrogen blows 1,000 ping pong balls up in the air. So I'm going to let you see that, and then I'll come back and tell you about everything else Mr. Bond does. Luckily, only one of the ping pong balls broke. <laughs> All right, how cool was that? 1,000 ping pong balls. In fact, you might see some ping pong balls lying around because they went everywhere. They might be near you. Um, well, that's all I have for you today. Thanks again to all the libraries for making this possible. And next summer, I will see you in person, live, Mr. Bond and the science guys. Uh, I have three questions, and the answer to the questions is yes. Are you ready? First question, is science fun? Yes. Is science cool? Yes. Is science easy? Yes. Fantastic. Mr. Bond does in-school field trips where we come in and do workshops for your classes. We do after-school clubs where you can see Mr. Bond every week after school and do more and more science. We do summer camps, still time to sign up if you want to do a summer camp here in Nashville. And we also have birthday parties. So if you want the most fun birthday party ever, look up MrBondScienceGuy.com. Thanks from Mr. Bond. Thanks again to all the libraries. Thank you, guys. Have a nice summer.